Hello YouTube. I guess you all know what this means. Well, you can read the title of the video, so it's pretty obvious. But this is a box for a Mac Pro. And uh, I'm not going to list it out because this thing is freaking heavy. But, there we go. There is the Mac Pro. Alright, much better angle now. This is the Mac Pro that uh, you just saw the box for. This is a Mac Pro 3.1, also known as the early 2008. This is a dual quad-core configuration, so this is the 8-core model. And uh, originally came with 2 gigs of RAM and 320 gig hard drive. And uh, the 8800 GT graphics card, so not the 2600 XT that most of these had. Let's just uh, take a look inside here. Pull the side panel off. And there we have a look at the inside of the machine. There you go, a little bit of a zoom there. You can see the GeForce graphics card right there. And the uh, incorrectly uh, placed drive base. Let's fix that, in fact. These are very tight, by the way. This is a carrier for an SSD. This one has a 60 gigabyte. This was used for uh, installing Windows. I'll get to why in a bit. This is another SSD carrier, which is a bit tighter in there. As you can see here. This is a 480 gigabyte. which is the main OS drive. There we go. And there's also a hard drive in here. This is a Western Digital Raptor, as you can see. 150 gigabytes in size. And that one is used for Mac OS, uh, Mac OS X Snow Leopard. So this is a dual boot configuration. We have Snow Leopard, actually a triple boot. Uh, we have another drive, the 480GB has macOS Mojave on it and the uh, Raptor has Snow Leopard and the, uh, I already said that and the other SSD has Windows 10 Why I needed to use Windows 10 is because of the video card in here that uh, gorgeous little GeForce 8800 GT over here uh, didn't display a uh, boot screen and that was interesting because this is an official Mac card and it also showed, uh, showed as such in Windows uh, when I did the GPU-Z lookup. It uh, said 8800 GT Mac Edition. What my theory is about this card is that this is not the original to this machine, but rather a uh, one that was sourced from a Mac Pro 1.1 uh, with 32-bit firmware. What I had to do was boot into Windows, run NV Flash, uh, from the GUI, uh, well, it's not the GUI version, but it's, it's like a command line version that you have to run from Windows, and uh, flash another BIOS to it. And uh, after that, it worked absolutely fine. Even had boot screen and everything. Before that, I just could not get any form of display out of this machine. So I just, uh, you know, installed Windows on SSD. When I know Windows 10 handles hardware changes very, very well. So I just slapped that in here and waited for it to boot up and Lo and behold, it did. And then I could reflash the ROM and uh, go from there. RAM-wise, we have two riser cards. I have shown Mac Pros before on the channel, but, you know. It uses two of these risers. Each has four slots for DDR2 fully buffered DIMMs. This one is very dusty, I am aware. Once we're going to do upgrades, I'll also clean the machine properly. Right now it is still in a testing phase, so I can work out if everything is working properly or not. It would appear that this machine is totally stable, so, you know, that's good. There we go. That's nice and secure. Either way, uh, it has 4 gigabytes of RAM installed, so both risers have two sticks of 1 gigabyte. And, uh, yeah, that's not really all that much. And also, another interesting upgrade he previously owned did was he installed a second super drive. Not going to use them, but, you know, it's good to have. They're both IDE still. 
So yeah, that is basically all that we need to show in terms of hardware on this. It's really not all that special just yet. It is still very much a basic configuration. You've also noticed perhaps these hard drives here on the side. This is a Seagate Barracuda, 750 gig. This was used for time machine backups. And this is the original OS drive that it wouldn't boot from, but this drive still works fine. In fact, this is actually a really good moment to uh, talk about why you should really wipe uh, your drives when you sell a machine, even if you're not really sure uh, if the data can still be accessed. If the latter is the case, just throw the drives out, just destroy them, smack them with a hammer, throw them out of the window, whatever. Just destroy them, physically. Because these drives contained all co uh, sorts of company data. I know that the previous owner um, for his job was a web developer, and I know that he has a, uh, has a business. And I found lots of data about his business on this machine. I'm not gonna abuse the data, I just, uh, obviously I, I yeah, clearly formatted these drives. In fact, I've debanded them already, and they're completely wiped. No data can be recovered from these whatsoever, and I will only use them for myself, so no data will leak. But it's, it's seriously a security hazard to leave your files on a machine, even if you think the drives cannot be accessed anymore. If you want to be safe, pull them out, destroy the drives, chuck them away, whatever. Just don't leave them in the machine. Because I did a fresh install of, of Mac OS after I got the video card running, and I could browse through all of the files from the entire history of this machine, from 2008 all the way up to 2017 when it was last properly used. Anyways, enough rambling about that. Let's turn the machine on now and take a look at how she runs. All right, so our monitor is set for DVI. Listen to that 8800 spin up. Mm. Absolutely horrendous. Before I flashed the ROM, it would literally keep making that noise until basically some kind of OS or driver loaded. So right now we're going to boot into macOS Mojave, as it would seem. I do have some hardware upgrades planned for this machine because I absolutely love these Mac Pros. I've had one of these as my main machine for a while. I really enjoyed it every step of the way. And the only main reason I really got rid of it was because it was no longer powerful enough for me to play games on it. I had a dual boot with uh, Windows 7. And uh, as soon as me and my friends started playing or uh, getting into GTA 5, I really noticed that I really needed something a bit more powerful. I had a Mac Pro 2008 with 16 gigs of RAM and a Radeon 7950. And that was a good combination, for sure. So right now we're running the 8800 GT. I'll give you a little bit of zoom here. So we can take a better look. And uh, this is going to get replaced with a different card. I ordered a 5870 1GB from eBay, and uh, it should be here somewhere next week. And I ordered a 16GB RAM kit from China, which I'll put in here next to these 4GB DIMMs, just to see if that will work. And then we'll have 20 gigs. I just, you know, I don't really have any use otherwise for these FB DIMMs, so I might as well try to combine them. And that should be plenty. Here's our disk configuration. We have the 480 gig uh, Kingston A400 SSD, which has a on Mojave on it. We have a bootcamp disk and a 150 gig SATA drive for Snow Leopard. Here's the RAM configuration. Very simple. This machine also has uh, wireless, and I'm not 100% if this has Bluetooth at all. I think it does. Yep, we also have Bluetooth. Okay, it's a combo card, so that's good. And uh, Wi-Fi works fine in Mojave as well. If you're wondering how to install Mojave on a machine this old, uh, follow the DOS Dude One patcher instructions. This machine will also run macOS Catalina, but I don't really see a use for macOS Catalina at the moment over Mojave because Mojave still supports 32-bit apps, so your selection is a bit better. 
and uh, originally these ran up to El Capitan, which have also run on this when I got it up and running, and uh, that worked absolutely fine. The Mojave is fine too, it's a little bit slow in terms of graphics, but other than that it works very well, despite this machine being 12 years old. And uh, yeah, there's just not all that much on there at the moment. As you can see, it totally skipped the uh, animation there. Yeah, animations are very slow. I'll see if I can uh, disable those. If uh, They're also going to run very slowly on the 5870, but I highly doubt that will be the case. As you can see, Mark's Office 2016 is on here. Opens up reasonably quickly. Apparently I need to update it. I also have a copy of 2019 somewhere, but I couldn't run it before because I was running El Capitan. And uh, El Capitan does not support 2019, you need Mojave for that, I think. Or oh, I Sierra, I think I Sierra. But that's fine. Right. So let's explore the other options here. It's gonna say there's a window, there's a, I want to say Windows update, no, a software update. It wants to reboot uh, and install macOS Catalina, but obviously that's not gonna work at all. You need to run the Catalina patch and then upgrade that way. But that's beside the point. Right. Let's go to the startup disk. Plug in my password right there. And here we have our choices. We have Snow Leopard, 1068, or Boot Camp. Let's reboot in the Snow Leopard first and go to Windows last. Because it's the least important OS. It's handy if I need to do some things that macOS cannot do, such as NV Flash. I tried to run the 8800 GT on my main PC, which is a third-gen Ryzen system, but uh, the card is not even picked up at all in any way. Not in DOS, not in Windows, nowhere. So there was no way to actually uh, flash the card other than using this Mac Pro, because I don't have any other computers in the house that are old enough and have PCI Express slots available because all my other systems have AGP and the only other powerful PC that is in the house is also a Ryzen of their gen, so yeah it is now Snow Leopard booting from a hard drive so this is not an SSD boot at all let's log into my account there we go it's very fast from this uh, 10,000 RPM Raptor drive here again, we have these specifications. And if we go to Serial ATA, it will show us this is the hard drive here. Rotation speed, 10,000 RPM. I have a couple of these Raptors, I also have a 300 gig in my speed machine. Very quick. Don't think there is a ton on here. Let's take a look at the applications folder. Oh, apparently I installed Age of Empires 3. The main reason to run Snow Leopard on a machine like this is Rosetta, so you can run PowerPC games from like 2001, basically OS 10 first game, up to, to about uh, when they went full Intel. But you can also run, like I said, all the native PowerPC games. And that is very nice. We have now Zoo Tycoon 2 here. We have Auto Tournament 2004. We can you know, jump in that real quick. So you can see how it runs on the 8800 GT. Spoiler alert, it runs very well. If it wants to run at all this time. That's weird. Played it a week ago, worked fine. Now it just crashes. GG, no re. Uh, we also have Future 99, see if that wants to load up. Might have to copy the files over again, from UT 2004. That's fine. pointer is absolutely gone to pieces because it is no longer sharp. There we go. 
Either way. Perhaps the video card is feeling a bit flaky today. I don't know. It is, after all, one of those really old ones. Uh, Alright. So I guess that's no leopard. <laughs> I'll look into why those games aren't working properly, but uh, no big deal. Let's hold down the option key then to go to Windows this time. And there we go, there's the post, there's the image. So again, it's going to get upgraded. To, uh, well then probably 20 gigs of RAM and a uh, 5870 graphics card. I'm also looking into options to maybe put USB 3 in here and maybe get one of those uh, SATA 3 to PCI Express cards. You know where you literally mount an SSD to a, SATA, to a PCI Express card and run it that way. I do have a uh, PCI Express card that can accept M.2 SSDs but uh, of course, this will not boot from an NVMe drive at all. <laughs> These are way too old for that. And uh, that's Windows 10 booted. This is Windows 10 Pro 1903. Of course, you need Windows 10 Pro if you're going to run bootcamp on these machines, because the second processor will not be detected on a home edition. So, that's important to note. But. Uh, even Windows 10 runs very, very well on this machine. It is just way annoying because it is Windows. It just, you know. But uh, even got uh, the bootcamp software working. In fact, I didn't even download the latest bootcamp software from Apple. I just uh, put in the Snow Leopard DVD from, uh, you know, that I have and it opened up the Windows section of the DVD, installed the software there in Windows Vista compatibility mode and everything is still fine. Installed all the drivers, installed all the software. The only thing that doesn't properly work is basically... where was it? The Apple software updater. This one does not work. It just crashes. As you'll see shortly. There you go. Just crashes. It fails to get uh, newer software because you need to install Bootcamp 4. But then again, Bootcamp 4 is a bitch to install because you need to force uh, some ways through the command line to actually get it to install properly. And I found this version to be sort of stable, really. And uh, I guess this is also the best way to actually run the latest version of Windows 10 on these because uh, this is really not a supported configuration at all. Apple only supports up to Windows 7 on these. And Microsoft is also kind of cutting back on the driver support for the bootcamp uh, drivers, so... Overall, it's started to become pre pretty much a shit show for these older Macs. Which is a shame, because if you're not very tech-savvy, it's, it's really just a worthless machine at this point. Because it doesn't run the latest software for macOS, it doesn't run the latest Windows. So it's really stuck there in limbo between unsupported versions. I guess El Capitan is perfectly fine for a little while more, but it's really getting pretty old now. And most software requires Sierra at this point, so. But anyway, I guess that concludes my overview of this acquisition of this Mac Pro 2008. I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you for watching, and stay tuned for further upgrades.